If you've recently been seeing articles saying that Earth's core has stopped spinning, well, rest assured, everything's okay. And in this video, I will be answering the question of whether the core has actually stopped spinning, how we know this and how scientists figured this out, and what kind of implications that actually has. So I'll start by just going over how Earth's layers formed, and then I'll jump into what the heck is going on with the core. Did it stop spinning? And if so, when? Is it currently spinning? Which way is it spinning? And why? So the layers on Earth formed after accretion because as Earth cooled down, it underwent something called differentiation in which dense elements sank to the core and less dense elements rose to the surface. That's why we have an iron-rich core and a silicate, a less dense material-rich mantle and crust. Earth's iron-rich core was also differentiated into an inner and outer core. The inner core is solid and the outer core is liquid. Because of this liquid layer that separates the inner solid core and the rest of Earth, the inner core can undergo or is likely to undergo something called differential rotation, meaning it doesn't have to rotate the same way or the same rate as the rest of Earth. Or at least this is what's been proposed by the most recent paper that all the news people are going nuts about and other papers that have talked about differential rotation of the inner core in the past. And I will link all of the papers I mention and reference in this video in the description box below. So down to the question at hand, has Earth's core stopped spinning? Well, not technically. The thing that initially caused all of this chaos around whether Earth's core has stopped spinning is a recent Nature Geoscience article that suggests that Earth's core no longer rotates in the same direction as Earth. Hi guys, this is Future Rachel here. I posted this video yesterday and I must repost it and call myself out for my mistake yesterday because I really don't want to miscommunicate this, uh, you know, finding that poorly like I did yesterday, which is suggest that the there was a change in direction. Uh, what I actually should have said is that there was a change in rotation rate, as I'll show later on the graph that they have in this paper. Um, so I'm reposting this video now. If you saw yesterday's, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm correcting myself here because that's just really bad of me to keep that up, even though it's so wrong. Um, and so really, it wasn't that it changes in direction, uh, but that it changes rotation rate. The major finding of this paper that caused all of the news articles to say, oh, the core stopped spinning, was a near pause of the core's spin or rotation in around 2009, that where they found it decelerated so much it, it almost paused. But to my understanding, it, it wasn't a full pause from the comments yesterday and my re-rating of the paper, but please, you know, comment down below if you know more than me about this because as you guys know geophysics is not my realm of geoscience but this is my understanding however this is not the first time that scientists have suggested that the core has stopped spinning changes in inner core rotation have been proposed as early as 1996 or at least that's the earliest that i could find it and you can find that reference listed as number three in the description box below however the timing of these rotation changes of the inner core are what remain debated. And that's mainly the only novel thing really in this new January 2023 paper, which suggests a, a seven decade cycle of oscillations from spinning one direction to stopping and then spinning the other direction. However, other papers like number two that I'll discuss later have suggested different timing around this cycle of oscillations. So remember throughout this video, every single time I say other direction, I mean deceleration, not spinning the other direction. My bad. Again, please forgive my mistake. But before I talk about this, allow me to explain kind of the data behind why this most recent paper suggested the seven decade cycle of oscillations in the inner core rotation. So in general, the inner core's rotation is inferred from temporal changes between repeated seismic waves that travel through it. This figure here is from the most recent paper, which is showing the paths of seismic waves through the inner core that have previously shown temporal changes that suggest differential rotation of the inner core. So again, differential rotation in the inner core is something that's been suggested throughout you know, the past few decades from seismic wave data, but 
the novel thing about this paper is the timing. They actually suggest that there was a pause in the intercourse rotation in the recent decade, around 2009. Why do they suggest this? Well, this figure here shows the first bit of data about why this may be the case. There are significant temporal changes along all the paths of seismic waves through the inner core before 2009. After 2009, these temporal changes stop appearing. We can see this in the data because there's drastic misalignments in the inner core waveforms from 1998 to 2004 measurements. And then in 2009 to 2017, they're basically consistent. There aren't any more misalignments. They also looked at waveform similarity denoted with an S to confirm this difference in behavior of inner core rotation from the earlier decades to the recent decade. And what this similarity graph here is showing through time is that older S values, older similarity values before around 2009 are all less than 0.95, whereas recent S values post-2009 are scattered around 0.95. Now, this is to be expected because we just saw on the previous slide with this misalignment data that the older sets of seismic wave passed through the core were much more variable than post-2009 sets. Now, to understand the basic meaning behind what the paper is getting at here, you don't really need to understand the type of data being shown or what similarity really means. All you really need to know is that pre-2009 and post-2009 drastically differ. They then used a best fit spline function to approximate the amount of differential rotation over time. And how I best interpret this data is that the rotation rate of Earth's inner core, which was spinning the same direction as Earth from 1995 to around 2009, was slightly increasing over that time period, and then it flattens or slightly decreases. And this is when you have a gradual deceleration for a few years leading up to 2009 when it paused and then decelerated. They then used another set of data from 1964 to 2021. It, it went back further than the 1995 set. And it was largely consistent with the other set that from 1995 to 2021. And they actually were able to, because it went back further, to find another overturn in the data or slowdown in rotation rate in the early 1970s. From the late 1970s to the early 2000s, it was nearly steady. And this trend, these trends, suggest a around seven decade oscillation period. Now I say period here because it's important that, you know, we see a pause here in the early 1970s and one in around 2009. And if you you know, add up the decades between then, it's not seven, it's actually about half that. But it's important to note that they're talking about the periodicity in the paper. When you talk about the period of a wave, it's from crust to crust, not crust to, I don't know what the wave terms are, but you know what I mean. Twice the amount of time from early 1970s to around 2009 is around seven decades. And that's the period or the oscillation cycle period that they propose in this paper. Now, what's the cause behind this core switching direction thing? Well, core kinetics is controlled by EM, electromagnetic, and gravitational torque. Electromagnetic torque is what drives inner core rotation and gravitational coupling between the mantle and inner core slows the core rotation and turns it into an oscillation. This is why we have these oscillatory cycles. A slight shift in either is sufficient to change the inner core rotation. So in layman's terms and in my understanding, this whole explanation of the cause of the core switching is still up for interpretation of whether it is on a kind of cyclic pattern that happens every you know certain amount of decades or whether there's certain external forces and external factors that might kick off certain switches and changes in, you know, these torques that then causes inner core rotation change. Um, so I didn't get a full sense in the paper of whether we know that's a consistent cycle or something that could be driven by random variations. And if anybody else knows, please comment down below which one it is. We The answer is probably we don't know yet. And that's why this paper was written because, you know, current research is still going on.
Now, what are the implications of the core switching? Well, surprisingly, the multi-decadal periodicity of the inner core rotation coincides with variations in length of day and the magnetic field. Now, down here are two graphs that they include in the 2023 paper that this is based off of, the left one showing length of day variations over time, and a best fit for these variations, and they put this fit and the variations on their model for the inner core rotation variation over time. And we can see that they greatly, you know, correlate. Um, but disclaimer, correlation does not equal causation. I've said that, you know, in a recent video and probably many videos on my channel. So it's important that we don't take away too much from this, other than the fact that further research should be done to look into whether this correlation has any meaning behind it. The paper suggests that this may indicate a resonance across Earth's layers. And this isn't that far a stretch because this has been indicated by many data throughout the past few decades. Speaking of, there is also multi-decadal periodicity observed in Earth's climate. For example, global mean temperature and variations in length of the day and global mean sea level and magnetic dipole changes shown in both of these plots down below also show correlations, respectively. And this suggests that the multi-decadal periodicity of climate might also originate from the oscillating core mantle system. And now you might be wondering if these correlations are related to causation in some way, is it the core mantle oscillation that causes the variations in length of day, magnetic field, and climate? Or is one of those other things that we think is an effect really a cause? And it might be that they're so closely linked that they affect each other. So there doesn't have to be just one cause. They can cause each other to vary depending on which one kicks everything off. But again, this is where I think uh, there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. So what kind of conclusions can we draw from this paper? Well, this seven decade or around seven decade oscillation model explains the observed data in seismic wave temporal variations over time through the inner core. However, it is not required by the data. Thus, it's important that we remember that this is not absolutely the case. This seven decade model isn't absolutely what is going on inside Earth, but it is one possibility. There are many other possibilities. For example, others have suggested that there is 20 to 30 year oscillation periods, and that is in the reference label too in my description box if you want to check it out. But again, the major you know theme of this video is more research is required, and also don't listen to every major news article title that you read because a lot of times they're over exaggerated or sometimes exaggerated to a point that they're almost not true. The Earth's core and the Earth itself is still spinning and we're not all going to die if it stops spinning because it's oscillatory, it starts to spin again. And even if it did stop forever, we still don't really understand what that would cause at Earth's surface, if anything drastic at all. I mean, does anybody remember when this happened in 2009? Uh, no, so <laughs> it's not like we really felt it. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I don't really often talk about geophysics things on this channel, but again, I got some comments about this news article and I wanted to make a video about it because I think it's important that we see, you know, Know, real information breaking down the paper rather than just short two paragraph news articles and two minute videos about it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making this. It put me out of my comfort zone, but I hope I explained it somewhat correctly. And if anybody knows more than I do about geophysics and what's going on with core, please comment down below. We'd all love to hear what you have to say. Anyway, thank you again. And I will see you guys in my next video.